Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. It is finally fall time here in Georgia. I'm wearing three layers and I'm not loving it, not gonna lie. But to celebrate the coming of fall, I am participating in the Halloween challenge hosted by Meg over at Lovely Jubbly Furniture. So after you watch this video, make sure to check out the playlist. We have so many amazing furniture artists participating in this year's challenge. So make sure to check that out. And I hope everybody has a safe and fun Halloween. But anyway, I think it's time we start flipping, don't you? Yeah, I, I, I think it's time. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you get on me for painting Tiger Oak, just let me say it's not real. It's not actually Tiger Oak. So hold your horses, calm down, and let's just enjoy me making an art piece out of this, okay? Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, this piece is very well loved and needs even more of it to get it to where we want it to be. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that it's nice and clean so that when we paint, our paint is adhering to the wood itself and not to any gross things. And to make sure that anything that is on the wood doesn't get embedded deeper into the wood when we go into sand. For working with glass, of course I do not recommend doing this barehanded, but you know, you know your skills, you know your capabilities, and you know the risks that you're willing to take, so use proper precautions that you are comfortable with. Since this is the Halloween challenge, I wanted to use this glass for later, so I'm making sure that all of the loose pieces of glass are out of the way and safe and sound, and that this piece doesn't go crashing down on me in the middle of sanding or any of my other steps in this process. After vacuuming and before sanding, it is always a great idea to wipe down your piece with water and vinegar. That way you make sure that everything is very nice and clean before you sand. For sanding, I am not doing anything special. I just went in there with the 60 grit just to make sure that all of those flaky fake tiger oak pieces were out of there. And that way my paint would have something to adhere nicely onto. Usually you want to finish off with a finer grit like 120 or 180, probably even 220 if you're looking to get a really smooth finish. However, with this piece, I wasn't too worried about it for the style that I'm going for. So I just left it at 60 grit. That way I had some nice extra grip for my paint. For this style, I was highly inspired by Amy over at Flip It Furniture. Her signature style is kind of this blend of colors that makes it look like the darker color on the outside just kind of fades into this bright, beautiful, rich color on the inside. And I wanted to try to give it a go, and I thought that the Halloween challenge and this piece would make the perfect opportunity for me to give it a go. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of expected this to be easy, <laughs> I don't know why I'm an artist, I've painted and all that, I have experience with blending colors, and so I thought that it would be relatively simple. It really is not. It is not an easy process to blend two colors into each other. I had so many brush strokes when I was first trying this out, and it took so much longer than I expected it to. So if you are interested in trying this technique, I highly recommend checking out Amy's videos. She is so talented at it. But for the base 
basics, I will tell you that you're gonna need a spray bottle, at least two paintbrushes. If I were ever to try this method again though, I think I would do three paintbrushes. That way I could have one for each color and then keep one aside for blending the colors. But of course, this depends on how many colors you're looking to blend. If you're looking to blend three, of course, then you'll need four paintbrushes and so on and so forth. I like having a spray bottle of water by my side when I'm doing this technique because then it just makes it super easy when your paint starts to dry and get a little tacky. You can just spray real quick and it makes it wet again so that you can blend your colors a lot easier. For the piece itself, I decided to fade from the top down from black to purple, so I started with painting the bottom of it purple, and then I went on to painting the top half black. I wanted to get the large parts of the piece painted, that way I could focus individually on the blending portion of the piece. This will make the blending portion so much easier, and that way you don't have to worry about battling with drying times and all that, you can just focus on getting those blended colors blended. For the darkest color, I personally found that keeping the majority of the piece purple gave me a little bit of leeway because I did want it to be about half and half with half black, half purple. So making the majority of it purple first gave me a lot of ground to blend. Let's talk about paint for a second. I am using both Melange paint and Good Bones chalk paint, and let me tell you, Good Bones is amazing. I used to be a Melange girl, you know, I love Melange, I still do. They're a great brand, great colors, they're awesome. However, I've been working with Good Bones paint for a couple of weeks now, and this is my second piece that I've done with Good Bones paint in the color Noir, and I've maybe used like a fourth of the quart that I got from them. It is amazing. The coverage on this is absolutely insane. And I'm watering it down quite a bit to make it spread. However, the coverage is still unbelievable. I barely had to do two coats. The second coat was genuinely just for touch-ups. It was insane. And not only that, but it dries so fast. It is so convenient to work with if you're looking to get things done in a hurry. But it also reactivated when you put water on it, so it made it so easy to blend blend. This stuff is genuinely incredible. For brushes, I am using Zebra paint brushes for the first time ever. I recently joined their affiliate program and I got a couple of brushes and honestly, I'm not all that impressed. Given their hype and everything, I expected to get less brush strokes in my paint. Maybe it was the paint that I used or something, but I, I don't know. I just expected a little bit more. On top of that, they're not that comfortable to hold. I'm not too big of a fan of the handle and the sharp edges. It just feels a little unfinished to me and I, I'm just, I'm not a huge fan. And I know that as an affiliate, I probably shouldn't be saying that, but I wanna be honest with you guys. But if you already use zebra brushes or just want to try them out to find out if you like them for yourself, I do have a link in the description below so make sure to check that out if you are interested. This blending process really did take a lot. It was very frustrating getting the darker color where you didn't want it or the lighter color where you didn't want it and just having to go back and forth and back and forth. But honestly, it just takes patience. It just takes a little bit of patience and time to get that perfect blend. Just keep going at it. I promise you will eventually blend it to the point where you don't see any brush strokes and it just nicely fades one color into the next.
If you are enjoying this video, by the way, make sure to hit that like button, the notification bell, and subscribe and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family. I love the support and I love hearing from you guys in the comments below. Also, if you're looking for other ways to support Miss Flips, make sure to check out my membership program. I have some awesome benefits in there for you guys, including comment priority, early video releases, as well as personal conversations with me where you can ask me anything about pieces that you're working on, the business or anything. I am up for those conversations. So please make sure to check that out and help me continue to help you guys. Also, don't be afraid to add more color. If you're not getting the location right with your fade or you're not getting the amount or length or whatever the case may be with your fade, don't be afraid to add more of the color that you need and then just go back and forth. Sure, it adds a little bit of time, but trust me, it is definitely worth the effect. To give this piece an extra pop, I went in with some gold rub and buff and just went in to highlight certain aspects of the piece.
After the piece was completely dry and ready for its top coat, I went in with Melange's finishing balm and went ahead and rubbed down all of the surfaces and then wiped off the excess. Since the glass is broken on this side of the piece, I will be replacing both sides with a piece of paneling and then doing the same faded look. However, since it is Halloween, I decided to stay on theme and do something with it. I will be posting photos on my Instagram, so make sure to follow me there for the final results. Before I show you guys the finished product, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed the process and maybe learned a little something along the way. Don't forget to check out the Halloween challenge playlist. We have some amazing artists over there and a huge thank you over to Meg at Lovely Jubbly Furniture. Thank you so much for hosting this challenge and I hope to see you guys at the next one. In the meantime, stay flippin'.